Chapter 1. The Big Boom The summer day was so hot that Zeddy did not feel like moving. He lay on his bed, his big dark eyes staring blankly at the ceiling. He was bored. There was no other word for it. Worst of all, it was only three weeks until school started. Zeddy, you need to take the dog out, his mother Zadie called from the kitchen. But Mom, it's too hot to go outside right now. Can't I wait till it cools off some? Zeddy pleaded. An answer didn't come immediately, so Zeddy sat down because he knew silence meant his mother was on her way. Zeddy's mother appeared in the doorway just as Zeddy made it upright. Young man, Zipper is your dog. We told you that having a pet is a big responsibility. You asked for him, you get to take him out, his mother replied. Okay, Mom, I'm going, Zeddy answered half-heartedly. Zadie smiled triumphantly and headed back to the kitchen to finish making lunch. As Zeddy mumbled and grumbled to himself, he got up from the bed to look for his shoes. Zeddie was on the frail side, thinner and a little shorter than the other boys his age. His brown hair was a little shaggy since the international government had passed the new adolescent school haircut standards to prohibit gender discrimination. He may have been small, but what he lacked in size he made up for in smarts. Zeddie had an IQ that was off the charts a fact he had been taught to hide as much as possible in front of others since he could speak. He knew his parents were scared of that the international government might discover his true IQ. He just didn't know why. Don't worry about it, gang. I can take Zipper out. I need to clear my head before lunch, Zeddy's father Zane called from the living room. It's okay, Dad. I'm coming. I just need to find my shoes. Zeddy called back as he shuffled through the piles of precious paperback books cluttering his floor in the perilous search for his shoes. Sometimes Zeddy enjoyed weaving in and out of the piles pretending he was in a giant maze. Today he felt like he had dropped a grain of sand and was looking for it on a beach. He lifted fallen books and scattered papers, hoping that somewhere in this organized chaos he had dropped his shoes. Just join us when you find them, Zeddy. Zipper really needs to go out. We shouldn't be too far down the street by the time you find them his dad answered. Will do, dad. Zeddy sped up the search to find his shoes. Zane traveled often for work. This last trip he had been gone for over two months, and Zeddy had truly missed him. When his dad had gotten home yesterday, he was so tired that he went straight to bed. Zeddy had been anxiously waiting for a chance to get his dad alone so he could find out if his dad had discovered anything new and amazing for them to discuss. Zane and Zeddy shared a love of science that other people didn't understand. His mother surely didn't understand all the scientific things Zeddy and his dad were always babbling about. Even Zane's bedtime stories for Zeddy all revolved around the adventures and explorations of two famous scientists, Dantes and Prophecy. Zeddy had each tale memorized, and he had even started to collect them in journals that he read over and over while his dad was away. Finally, Zeddy pulled his shoes on and tied the laces. Then he ran down the hall towards the front door. As he reached for the handle, he heard a giant noise outside the house. Kapow! Zap! Kaboom! Zeddy threw open the door. It had sounded almost like a gigantic lightning strike, but there wasn't a cloud in the sky. The air was filled with the crackling of static electricity. The sky was blazing neon pink, but it wasn't close to sunset or sunrise. Zeddy stood there mesmerized. As he watched, the sun seemed to soak up the mystical magenta static into its hot yellow rays. Before he could even blink, the sky was the color of a yellowish-gray summer haze. What could be happening? Zeddy? Zeddy, where are you? Zadie shouted frantically as she came running from the kitchen. I'm here, Mom. At the front door, Zeddy answered. Are you all right? What happened? I heard that horrible noise. Are you sure you're all right? Zadie questioned her son. I'm okay, Mom. Really, I am. I was just at the door when I heard it, too. But it was too weird, Mom. When I opened the door, the sky was all pink, and it felt like my hair was going to stand on end from all the static in the air. Then, as quick as I saw it, the pink was gone, and so was the static. Where is your father? Wasn't he going with you to walk the dog? I was coming out to meet him. I thought he already left, Zeddy said as he looked up and down the empty street. Is he still in the house? I don't see anyone on the street. Zane? Zane, where are you? Zadie called out as she turned to check the house. I'll check outside, Mom, Zadie offered. No, Zadie said a little too quickly. I mean, let's check downstairs and then I can go with you to check outside. We don't know what just happened. I'm afraid to let you go alone. 
Hurry, let's check upstairs now, and then we'll go outside together. Shut and lock the door. This may be some new drill by the international government. Did you check the law update monitor for today's updates yet, Zeddy? Zeddy shut and locked the door, hanging his head in shame. No, Mom, sorry. I know that's one of my chores, but I... I... I forgot. I'm sorry. It's okay. We all forget things from time to time, even little geniuses like you. But we have to hurry now. I'll look for Daddy. You run. Check to see if we missed something. They posted the news updates at 7 o'clock this morning, and we should know them by now. Hurry. It could be important, Zadie said as calmly as she could with her heart pounding against her ribs in fear.